Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns in their upcoming February 2015 regional auction. And one that they have is a version of one of my very favorite guns, the Vickers Heavy Machine Gun. So Hiram Maxim invented the world's first effective machine gun in the mid-1880s. It, it took a little bit of work. Uh, by the, the late 1880s, the early 1890s, it was really quite an effective gun, the world's first. And eventually what Maxim ended up doing was going into a business partnership with the Vickers Company, which was a very large uh, steel and industrial and arms producing company in England. They formed Vickers Sons and Maxim, and what Vickers did was adapt the Maxim gun design into the Vickers gun, which we have here. Uh, in the process of doing this, they made the gun smaller, uh, the receiver's quite a bit shorter top to bottom. Uh, they made the gun lighter, and frankly they made the gun, if, if anything, more reliable. Um, the Vickers is renowned as one of the most reliable machine guns ever manufactured. Now this particular one is, is interesting because it's actually within the price range of someone who may not be able to afford a full auto machine gun. This is actually a semi-auto rebuild of a Vickers gun. It was done by US Ordnance. Uh, they did these actually for a very short time. They were done well, but the company ended up getting some contractual work to, to do military stuff on the M60 and some other guns. And that just offered them a lot more profit than semi-auto rebuilds of Vickers. So they, they dropped this project and not many were made as a result. All right, so how does the Vickers gun work? Well, let's start with the basics. This is a belt-fed, water-cooled gun. In original form, it was a machine gun. This particular one is semi-auto only. So you have your feed block right here. This is where you feed belts in. Uh, belt and ammo goes in, empty belt comes out the other side. This large cylindrical piece is your water jacket. You have a threaded plug right here. So you use a little funnel, fill this jacket up with water. That keeps the barrel cool. You'll see the muzzle is way down here. The barrel is located in the bottom of this cylinder so that as the water gets hot and starts to boil off, the barrel is always still underwater until it completely runs out. So that's our fill plug. We also have a plug right up here under the muzzle of the gun. Up here you would connect, sorry, right there, uh, you would connect a condenser hose. You'd run this hose into a tank with a little bit of, of liquid water in the bottom. What that does is this, when water starts to boil in the jacket, which happens after about 600 rounds through the gun in reasonably continuous fire, uh, you can take the steam that's boiling off, run it into this condensing can, and recondense it back into liquid water. Now there is no circulating system. Um, the Vickers gun was never set up with a mechanism to pipe that water directly back into the jacket. But what it allows you to do is capture that water, let it cool, and then when you need to refill the jacket, you can use that water and pour it back in through here. Uh, this particular gun does come with some of the, those accessories. We don't have them up here. You can take a look at, at all the accessories on Rock Island's catalog page. There's actually a link in the description below. So unlike the Maxim gun, the top cover of the Vickers gun is in two parts, separated at this pivot point. Our front portion allows access to the feed block, which can be removed simply by lifting it out of its cradle. This is what controls all the feeding to the gun. And notice it's got these nice beveled uh, brass edges on the front to make sure that cartridges don't snag going in. And then on the back side here, much narrower because we just have the belt coming out the back. If you need to release the belt uh, when it's in the gun, you have these two spring-loaded latches here and this one on the bottom. Squeezing those both simultaneously releases, uh, lifts the feed poles all up. Let's see if we can see inside there. Yep, like that. That releases their grip on the belt, allows you to pull the belt out. This lug right here is connected to the recoil plates in the gun so that when the action cycles, this operates the feed pulse. Reaches out, grabs a cartridge, pulls it in. So that's the front of the gun. The back of the gun the, the main rear top cover has our rear sight mounted in place. We can pop that up for longer range, and there's a small aperture on it right here for direct fire. 
There's a tab on the back. Lift that tab, and this whole thing pops open. And now we can take a look inside. All right, so inside the Vickers gun, we have our toggle lock right here. When this is all the way down, it lies flat, and recoil forces this whole assembly backwards. It's got a very strong spring that you can't really operate by hand. Once it comes backwards under recoil, the toggle breaks open slightly like this, and then cycles back and forward. That's the operating cycle of the Vickers. Our bolt, or as it's called in a gun like this, the lock, lifts out and it's just held on by an interrupted little screw here. So this is our lock assembly. On the front we have the extractor. There are typically going to be at least two cartridges on the extractor. You've got one down here being fired. You've got one up here in the belt. So when this is locked in place and ready to fire, you've got a round down here with a firing pin behind it. And you've got the, the extractor hooked onto a round that's still in the belt. So when the gun recoils and this lock comes backwards, this top cartridge is pulled backwards out of the belt and it then slides down. It kicks the empty case off the bottom, which ejects it out the bottom of the gun. And then you have a new round in front of the firing pin when the bolt goes forward, ready to fire. Now this has been modified to semi-auto. Those of you who are familiar with the look of a regular standard Vickers lock will notice that this is rather different up here. Um, that's of course per ATF regulation to make it a semi-auto gun. You'll also notice here in the gun we have an extra plate welded in between the side plates. This has your semi-auto disconnector. The trigger for the gun is back here. This lever is a safety, which just blocks the trigger from going forward. And then the trigger itself, when I pull the trigger, this bar comes backward. When you pull the trigger, it pulls this bar backwards. That down here interacts with this piece, which trips the lock and fires the gun. In a regular full auto Vickers, you don't have a piece like this. And as long as this bar is held back, the gun continues to fire. So the mainspring for the Vickers gun is located here on the side of the gun underneath the sheet metal cover. It has a threaded screw attached to the front, and you can actually use that to adjust the tension on the gun. So if your ammunition is, is underpowered or overpowered, or if the gun's getting dirty and sluggish, you can use this to adjust how much force is exerted on it. Uh, that also allows you to tweak the rate of fire. Uh, the more force you have on the spring, the faster the guns will fire. A uh, typical rate of fire would be about 500 rounds a minute, maybe even 450, uh, relatively slow. They can be sped up, uh, but that tends to put a lot of wear and tear on the guns. There are two exploits of the Vickers gun that really speak to its just incredible reliability and durability. The first one was in August 1916 at a battle called High Wood in Europe on the Western Front. Uh, a company of 10 Vickers machine guns was ordered to basically create a sustained barrage for 12 hours at a target area 2,000 yards away. The idea was the British were attacking and they wanted to prevent German forces from organizing a counterattack during this 12 hour period. So they had a, a company of machine guns maintain a continuous fire on what would be the German assembly area. A prize was offered to the machine gun crew that could fire the most rounds during this 12 hours as an incentive to have all the crews you know, trying to maintain a continuous fire. They had two full infantry companies relegated to carrying ammunition and water and barrels for the guns because of course this is a water-cooled gun so the barrel doesn't overheat but it does shoot out, uh, just like any gun barrel. And so these have a barrel life of 10 to 20,000 rounds, depending on how fast and how continuous the fire is. At any rate, this, this company of 10 guns did in fact maintain a continuous fire for 12 hours. They fired over, or, or just over, a million rounds of ammunition between them. And the highest shooting gun was uh, one particular gun crew that fired 120,000 rounds in 12 hours. Uh, at the end of this period, all 10 of the guns were still fully functional. None of them broke down. None had any significant malfunctions. You just keep feeding ammo, keep the water topped off, and change the barrel every 10 or 20,000 rounds. And these guns just kept working.
They're fantastic guns. Possibly the best functional machine gun ever made. So one question I realize someone is going to ask is, what's up with this cloth thing on the water jacket? The answer is this is, I don't know if this particular one is asbestos, but this is an insulating cover. Uh, some of the original ones were full of asbestos because despite the fact that this jacket does cool the barrel, what it does is cool the barrel by boiling water inside it. So this jacket gets very hot under sustained fire. Uh, these covers were put on so that you could carry the gun either over your arm or over your shoulder without burning the crap out of yourself. So it's a neat accessory to have with the gun. Possibly not something you're going to end up using on a semi-auto version, but cool to have and it looks neat on the gun. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We got to take a look at a gun that's really neat because it is a version of something that is so incredibly uh, famous and well regarded in firearms history and yet it's also really within the price range of someone who maybe can't afford a live machine gun. This is, of course, for sale through Rock Island. Uh, you can take a look in the, the description below, get a link to their catalog page where you can take a look at their pictures. They also have pictures of the other accessories that come with the gun. And uh, you could make this yours for a small fraction of the price of a live Vickers. I think these are very cool. And uh, if you're interested, good luck. Thanks for watching.